just uh, hip a dip in here, and today I'm going to be bringing a pretty special video. Um, I'm going to uh, show you guys how, how I build my teams, um, how to build a really good competitive team, and how to understand the basics of uh, competitive Pokemon playing. So, um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do when building a team is, especially on Smogon, you don't necessarily have to do this when you're playing on, uh, say, your DS or something like that. But on Smogon, you definitely want to uh, do this. You can go ahead and name it. Um, I'm going to call it um, New Team. And that'll be my name. Um, for format, this is what I was talking about. You're going to want to um, pick something that, um, you know, reflects what you want to be using. And all these mean is OU, Ubers, UU, RU, NU, LC. All that means is um, just the different Pokemon that you can bring. OU is probably the most common tier. It's where you can bring um, pretty much anything that's not a, uh, a legendary Pokemon. With the exception of a few, you can bring some legendaries, but usually you don't see them too, too often. And um, But Ubers is where you see most of the legendaries. And, um, you, I mean, you can't bring, like, Evil Tall to OU. Um, Evil Tall belongs to Uber, so that's a different tier. UU, you, you see things like, um, what's the word, uh, Arcanine, you'll see Arcanine in there, you'll see different, a lot of different stuff in all the different tiers. And all these mean is, like, OU means overused, Ubers is just insanely powerful. UU, underused, RU is rarely used, and, uh, NU is never used. And LC just means a little cup, and that's with, like, unevolved baby Pokemon. I've never been in there, but to be honest, I really haven't gone below, um, UU. Just because some of my favorite Pokemon are in OU and UU, so... I like to use what I like to use, and, um... Really, that's, you know, just use what you want, and you gotta work around the tier, so... That, that's pretty much my best advice for picking a tier. Um, I'm gonna stick with OU, and I'm gonna add some Pokemon. And just to give you an, a, a good idea of what is in OU, I'm going to go down some of the Pokemon, some of the big threats. Azumarill is a big threat. Uh, Charizard, both of the Mega Forms are in OU. Um, the Oxus Defense and Speed. Although, I will be honest, I have not seen any of these guys in OU ever. Um, really, they, I haven't. And uh, just some of the you know bigger threats like Garchomp and Greninja. Heatran is a pain. <laughs> it is such a pain, but, um, um, I've never seen Kieran Black, really. That's insane. And, um, Latias, Latios, Landorus, um, uh, Manetric is Megaform, Mamoswine, pretty big, too. Uh, Rotom Wash, this guy. <laughs> this guy's a pain, I swear. Um, Skarmory's not that big of a deal. But, uh, there is one Pokemon that I hate to death. And that is Gliscor. Here he is. Gliscor. This... The, I... If you use a Gliscor, I will lose all faith in you. I mean, really. I hate Gliscor, but, you know, it's just me. You know, there's gonna be some Pokémon that you do want to work with, some Pokémon that you don't. And, uh, it's good to have a very team, I believe, you know, something to throw the opponent off. Like, in my teams, I usually don't use too, too many things that are overused, like I use a Flygon, like how many people use a Flygon, you know? But that's just one of those things, and um, you know, you gotta pick stuff that you like using, that's very important. Because, um, you know, if you use something that's not jiving with you, it's just not gonna be a fun experience, and that's all this is really, is fun. And um, yeah, you know, you gotta pick stuff that's cool, um, stuff that you like, stuff that might be interesting to work with, so. That's, that's what really all I have to say about that. Um, in here you'll see some of the UU stuff, um, you know, just some different tiers that are cool. And again, anything in OU, if you could use it in any of the other tiers, you can use it in OU. You can work your way up, but you can't go down, you see what I'm saying? Like, you can use an Aegis Slash in OU, but you can't use an Aegis Slash in UU, so... That's just one of the something to uh, keep in mind, you know, if you really like Charizard, you can't use it in RU, you know. But, um, these tiers change over time, too. I mean, they, um, they switch up depending on how many people use them. 
But um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to actually build a team and then uh, I'll cut it out. But then once I build it, I'll go over how to build a team, what Pokemon are work well with each other, stuff like that. And, um, you know, I'll do that. So when I'm back, I will show you guys a team that I have made. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm back and I went ahead and built a team. A pretty good one. You can't see it, but there's an Espeon down here. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's a, it's actually a pretty good team. Um, I might actually use it in the future. But, um, let's go over it, Pokemon by Pokemon, and, um, yeah. So, I started off in the Electivire, and, um, the thing about the Electivire, he's not too, too fast without, you know, like a Choice Scar, so I decided to go ahead and give him one. Um, his ability is Motor Drive, so if you were to... If you were to predict, like, an electric-type attack and you were to switch in Electivire, he's at plus two speed now, because one with the uh, Choice Scarf and then another with the Motor Drive ability. So that's actually working out pretty, pretty well with him. Um, for his moves, I gave Bert some pretty strong moves. You really you, you really don't want to give him... Um, you don't want to give any Pokemon um, status moves such as Barrier, you know, when you're giving them a Choice item. When you give them a choice out of me, you usually want to make them so that they are hitting as hard as they can and not getting locked into a silly move like um, Barrier, for example. Which, it's not a bad move, but I mean, you know, you wouldn't put it on a choice Pokemon. You'd have to switch them out, so it's not even worthwhile. Um, for um, uh, his stats, I gave him 252 in attack and 252 plus in speed, so... That's what's going to make him as fast as possible. With the Choice Scarf, he's going to be outspeeding pretty much everything, and that's going to be working out pretty darn nicely in his favor. Um, he's going to be outspeeding a lot of stuff, so it's great for him. It's looking pretty fine over here. And uh, for his role on the team, he's designed to pretty much hit the hardest. Um, he's got the pretty much the most attack, and he's going to be able to outspeed a lot of stuff and uh, hit hard enough to be able to sweep, you know, once you get your other teammates in there and start setting up uh, hazards and stuff like that. So, you know, it's something pretty cool that uh, you can go ahead and do. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much Electivire's role on the team for inflicting heavy damage enough to KO uh, your other opponents in Pokemon. So that's something great to look forward to. Um, our next Pokemon is Hippowdon. And Hippowdon is actually doing pretty fine. Uh, we gave him some leftovers, and that's going to restore his health pretty nicely over time. Now, um, he only has one attacking move. Uh, that's going to be Stab Earthquake. And that's going to be allowing him to fill in that role as pro probably the most Pokemon that can use um, Earthquake hard, you know. Um, I cannot remember if I gave it to Agron or not. He's Agron's right here. But uh, anyway, so that's going to be his only attacking move because he's not designed to be an attacking Pokemon. He's designed to stay in there a while, get up rocks, and uh, just try and stall people a little. Like, I hate stall, but he's pretty much there to absorb physical hits, so that's what his role is. And um, I gave him Earthquake, Stealth Rock, just to add up extra damage. And um, I also gave him Stockpile. And that's going to boost his defense and special defense by one. And uh, so that's going to be great. I also gave him a slack off. And uh, that's going to be allow him to heal much more rapidly. If you can predict when you're going to need it, then it'll come in clutch, trust me. Um, for his ability, I gave him Sandstream. Now, what I went ahead and did this for was because I have three Pokemon that benefit from it. And that's pretty much the reason why I'm using uh, Hippowdon, um, excuse me, I'm using Hippowdon to pretty much set up the sand, the sandstorm and um, what that's going to allow it to do, because um, in another video I explained it, but sandstorm pretty much boosts um, ground, rock, and steel type Pokemon's special defense by 1.5, so for example, my special wall-ish Pokemon, pretty much, Empoleon, is going to get another huge special defense boost. So that is fantastic for the Pokemon, and it's going to allow him to stay in there much more longer, much longer, I should say, English, 
And um, so, yeah, that's going to be looking very fine for Yavada. And uh, he's probably going to be one of those Pokemon that will stay in the battle for a while, unless you need the fodder off something, but, you know, that's that's a whole nother story. Um, Hippowdon's pretty much going to be the physical absorbing... Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. That's going to be Agron. Hippowdon's pretty much there just to be a little extra bulk and to set up that sand stream. So, that's his role. Moving on to Empoleon. Um, Empoleon, um, he's, like I said, he's gonna, pretty much going to be the special defense Pokemon. And what I went, and went ahead and did is I gave him the Assault Vest, and that's going to boost his special defense by 1.5. And with the Sandstorm, it's going to make it so it's going to be plus 2. Now, that is going to be setting him up without him having to even do anything. So that's pretty much great. And uh, once he's got that set up, it's he's going to be pretty hard to get past. Um, so that's pretty much his stat thingy. Um, for his moves, I give him Scald. I mean, with the Assault Vest, you have to give him all attacking moves, so he's going to be a little like Electivire in that respectiveness. Um, I gave him Scald, and uh, that's going to be able to burn his target 30% of the time. It's a little shaky, but you know, it's that added bonus. Um, if you do get it, great. Um, if not, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, I give him Ice Beam for coverage, Flash Cannon for stab, and Hidden Power Grass. This is for a little bit of extra coverage for uh, ground type Pokemon or Pokemon that could potentially hurt Electivire or Aggron even. So it's a little something, you know, extra. And um, so yeah, let's move on to Aggron. And uh, Aggron here is uh, pretty much our physical wall. I've used Agron in a couple battles, and I've been so impressed with him. He's done great, great things being as immovable as he is, so I'm going to be using him a little more. Um, could also use Configigus, but it'd be cool to use a Mega Pokemon, and I wanted to use a Mega Pokemon, so I'm going to be using Agron. So. Um, for his moves, I gave him Heavy Slam, which is going to do a lot, considering he's probably the heaviest Pokemon that can. Well, actually, no, that's right. Mega Aggron's gonna get stabbed from it though, so that's gonna be boosting his power by a lot. I gave him Stone Edge, now that is gonna allow him just to hit some um, Pokemon like um, flying types pretty hard. Charizard, especially. Charizard X is gonna be taking a bit. Charizard Y is going down, no doubt, and um, so that's gonna allow him to be in there a while. I did not give him Stealth Rocks because Hippowdon does have that. Um, curse, I gave him Curse just to last a little longer. Plus one attack, plus one defense. And speed, we don't even care about speed with Aggron. He's so slow. He's, it's crazy, but anyway, so... Curse is going to be boosting his pretty much the two stats that matter most on Aggron, and that's going to be great. Um, I did give him Dragon Tail just to force switches, you know. He's going to be slow. He's not going to be outspeeding anyway, so if, like, someone were to switch in a special attacker. Now, Aggron could take one special attack, and then, uh, like, a really strong special attack. He can take one of those, and then Dragon Tail him out into something he can take on, so that's going to be great. Great for him. Um, and Dragon Tail is going to be doing quite a bit to Dragon-type Pokemon. Not that they would be in, necessarily, a long time with Aggron, but, you know, it gives them something to hit them hard with, besides Stone Edge if they're flying, so... That's something to look into. Um, with their next Pokemon, we have Palucha. Oh, I forgot to give. Uh, I forgot to go over stats with Agron. For his stats, I did my pretty much basic set that I use for Mega Agron: max HP, max defense, and plus in defense, and a uh, four in attack. So that is what I've been going on doing. And um, so yeah, uh, now let's move on. Let's go on to Palucha. And with Halucha, I have a pretty cool set with Halucha. Um, I figured out something that could work out incredible for him. It's, uh, it's going to be working pretty good. So what I went ahead and did is I gave him a Power Herb, and that's what's going to be the clutch to this set. Now, he's already pretty fast, but uh, with this Power Herb, he's going to be able to hit off a pretty strong physical flying type attack. That's two turns, it's a Sky Attack, right here, and this uh, item is going to allow him to do it in one turn, and then 
he's gonna get the unburden boost right here. And what unburden does, it doubles your speed if the item is lost. So, no matter what, if you lose your item, which we intend to with Power Herb, if you lose it, your speed's gonna be doubled. So, even after you switch out, so it's gonna be, he's gonna be insanely fast, and that's what we want. And, um, like I said, his main attack, sorry guys, my recorder kind of shut out there, but, um, like I was saying, his main attack that's going to be using two turns is going to be Sky Attack. And you see this guy, this move has all of the best with it. It's got a high power, a fairly high accuracy, um, a 30% flinch, and a high critical hit rate. Now that is a pretty darn solid move to me. So, that's what he's going to be doing with the Power Herb. And once that activates, we're going to be moving on to Acrobatics, which is going to be having a power of 110, 100% accuracy, and that's going to be hitting very hard like a truck. Now, usually what we'd be doing with Halucha is he'd be um, hitting with the Sky Attack once, then moving on to Acrobatics. So that's pretty much what we want to go ahead and do. And uh, if beforehand, if you can do this, Please do it. Um, what he's going to be doing is, if you can set up a home clause, please. That is going to make Sky Attack hit all of the time, and Acrobatics is going to be boosted, and um, High Jump Kick is going to be 100% accuracy. So you're going to be fine with that. So if you can set up a home clause, please do. You're going to be wrecking shop with your opponent, and. Uh, what Halucha's pretty much role on the team is um, to go ahead, be fast, and be able to finish up the jobs that other Pokemon can't really finish on themselves. Like, Empoleon can inflict some damage, but it's not going to be enough to knock out anything 100%. So that way, if Empoleon went down, Halucha could come in and clean up shop, and that's going to be doing... That's going to be his main role on the team, so that's great. And um, now we're moving on to Espeon. Now, Espeon's a pretty cool Pokemon because of its ability, Magic Bounce, and what that's going to be able to do is if you can predict an opponent to use a status move, then you can go ahead and switch in an Espeon, and that way you can go ahead and bounce it back. So if you predict the opponent to set up Stealth Rocks with like a Fairhorn or something, you can go ahead and switch in Espeon and it will bounce it right back at them. So that's going to be a great time for you. And if you keep Espeon in, and um, like say on something like a Donphan, Donphan's special defense isn't fantastic and you can go ahead and clean that up with Espeon right then and there, and he's not going to be able to set up his rocks ever again. So you can go ahead and go ahead and go with um, Espeon and that's going to be fantastic. So Magic Bounce is pretty much um, the main reason why we're using him on this team pretty much don't want any hazards at all on our Pokemon if we can avoid it. I mean, the hazards are so-so on this team. Other teams, it's terrible. If, you, if your main Pokemon is a Charizard, that's terrible if you get Stealth Rocks up there. It's unfortunate, so we want to avoid that. Um, Espeon's pretty much, pretty much great in that regard. His item is going to be Expert Belt, so what you can go ahead and do is you can pretty much play it up as if your choice. Um, like Choice Specs or Choice Scarf, then, they're poke then they can switch in somebody who they can think can take it, and then you can go ahead and hit them with a different move. So that's going to be fantastic. It's also going to boost your special, uh, what's the word, super effective attacks by 1.2. So that's a little extra bonus. His, uh, his moves is going to be Psy Shock. That's going to boost, uh, that's going to be hitting on the um, regular defense side instead of special defense. So they switch out like a special defense Blissey, you can go ahead and take it out one shot with Psy Shock, so that's great. Uh, Dazzling Gleams is to hit um, pretty much dragons, um, anything really. Shadow Balls is for coverage, and Hitting Power Fighting is going to be for the same thing, for coverage. Now, going on to stats, um, he's going to be pretty fast, there's not much to say here. So it's going to be fast, and hitting hard with that special attack, with the 4 in HP, not that that matters, but hey, it's something. Um, yeah, that's pretty much his role. He can go ahead and bounce stuff back and hit hard. He's the main special attacker on this team. Everyone else is pretty much a physical attacker except for Empoleon. 
So if we go back and look over, this is actually a pretty balanced set. Again, Espeon's down here, but you can't see him. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is actually a pretty balanced team. Feel free to use this team, maybe even I will use it, but um, it's something to look at if you wanted to get into the competitive battling scene and you didn't know how to start. You pretty much want to focus on one Pokemon and kind of work from there. And, you know, once you get a good formula going, like, I like using some certain Pokemon, but lately I've been branching out. And through that, you can go ahead and discover new things about different Pokemon, like Empoleon is pretty decent special defense. And if you set that up with Sandstorm, it's going to be great. Like, just little things like that, you're going to be set for a great battling experience. So, I'm Hippodippin. Uh, subscribe if you like the content. And thanks for watching this very special video. And I hope it helps people. And, uh, thanks. Bye.